Hello. Hi, Mihai. Let's continue with these talks. Thank you for being here. Um, today, I have um, these questions about uh, the psychology and the four way and the difference between psychology and esoteric psychology. I don't know if you can explain a little bit more about it. Yeah. Yes. So the, the difference between uh, regular psychology and esoteric psychology you mentioned, and you are mentioning this, the fourth way, and for people who are not familiar with this, fourth way is a spiritual path uh, that was brought into the West in the uh, late 1800s, early 1900s by Gurdjieff, George Gurdjieff, and it became popular through the, his student Uspensky, Peter Uspensky, and then somehow uh, the teaching developed, spread pretty strongly in 1900s and reached London, France, uh, United States, Mexico, and there was a whole lineage of teachers following this fourth way tradition, which the idea about it that it was a uh, it was not created by Gurdjieff it was more like an ancient esoteric path. Uh, and what I mean by esoteric is that it's not religion; it is a, a practical path to wake up, how they call it, uh, in, in in that teaching and many teachings that that, that humanity is asleep. Man, as we become 18, 19, we are not finished. We are like kind of half asleep. So the premise was that humanity as a whole is asleep, people are asleep, and fourth way was offering a methodology to, to wake up, so-called enlightenment or liberation from suffering. And so that will be esoteric, not just rules of conduct and how to, or belief or some uh, religion, yeah? So from one angle, the fourth way, it would be like esoteric psychology, or as Ospensky called it, the psychology of man's possible evolution. Mm -hmm. So, and I, you know, at that time, there wasn't much psychology. I, I think there was the very beginning of psychology. I think Freud, Jung, they just started. The psychology, psychotherapy is a new, uh, new, uh, I don't know, science or art. And, uh, um, but now we are much, much later. I would say there, yeah, it's, it's important to, to, to understand the difference between regular psychology and, uh, and regular psychology will be, um, you know, somebody has some suffering, some anxiety, depression, addiction, this or that. And then they come to a therapist and then they are trying to work it out somehow to diminish the suffering somehow. Uh, however, in a regular psychology, uh, there is not this understanding that we are asleep. <laughs> so it's almost like psychology in sleep. Regular psychology is psychology in sleep, where, uh, you know, like there is a, a going to university in sleep and, and uh, the students and the teachers are asleep and the doctor and the patient is asleep and the psychotherapist and the client are asleep. And when I say this asleep is more in connection to not knowing our true identity and the true identity being somehow uh, the true self as they call in spiritual teachings, the true self is dormant. And then uh, there is more like the, 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 the ego that is in charge. So regular psychology doesn't go there. Uh, it's uh, more like a mind from the mind, doesn't take into account awareness, doesn't work with awareness so much. Um, they are not, yeah, it's not interested in, um, um, this so-called process of awakening, regular psychology. However, lately uh, in the last, I don't know, 20, 30 years, 20 years or so, uh, 
there were various uh, therapists, psychologists that I think they had exposure to spiritual paths. They were more than, yeah, so they had some kind of, uh, they were more evolved from the point of view of mm -hmm. consciousness. And then, you know, like uh, Stanislav Grof and, uh, you know, the Hakomi teaching that they, they were somehow aligned. Even when I studied Hakomi a long time ago, I was trying study to, to study a psychotherapy that was uh, I thought is useful. And then I started to read the book and then the author was quoting Gurdjieff. I was like, oh my God, this is really? Gurdjieff, <laughs> Buddha, Lao Tzu. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting. That was aligned with these ideas. Uh, and what I'm now very much into this modality uh, created by, uh, developed by, by Scott Killaby and, and Dan McClintock, the Killaby inquiries. I consider that, uh, I mean, I've studied this for a long time and I searched, I've been a searcher, a seeker, a hunter of teachings and modalities. I find these Killaby inquiries to be very uh, cutting edge, highest level of esoteric psychology, the true psychology of man's possible evolution where it touches on both sides, some kind of becoming more awake, more present, this kind of presence, uh, witnessing uh, these kind of spiritual dilemmas, but also it addresses the psychological suffering and the traumas and addictions. So it, it looks, it deals with that. But at the same time, the, the, the idea is awakening basically and embodiment because some, what i mean by that is a whole other discussion here but some people uh, have some uh, awakening meaning that they are like oh we, we have glimpses or many people especially these days now with the youtube and many teachers and people some people get this thing like oh wow i am not my thoughts I am the witness of the thoughts. I am this witness, which is the presence. Mm -hmm. So they had some people, you know, they go meditation retreats or go to various teachers and they had this like big, uh, wow. And that's a, that's a major shift. So the identity, instead of being me as Mihai or me as the body, me as my thoughts, it's me as that which is aware right now me as the presence so some people have that and and they stop there they're like oh wow i got it i have attained that's it i'm done and maybe i start writing a book or starting being a teacher <laughs> but the the thing that that's they say in these traditions that that's more like a 30 percent or so there's just uh, one leg of the journey. And what's necessary now is to, to clean up all the, to clean up all the aftermath of having been in sleep for all our life. And there are some residual uh, patterns and various things that, that uh, are, are going to block us somehow. And so the next leg of the journey is called the embodiment. And, and Scott Killaby talks a lot about that to, to, okay, okay, like, okay, I got about presence and I am presence, but I can't connect to my wife. I can't put boundaries and I have some addictions. And so that's unfinished business there, you know? Anyway, we're coming back to you. Yeah, I think esoteric psychology, psychology, if I touch the point.